Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jalan, Mr. Nyotia, ladies and gentlemen, members of the media. First, I want to apologize uh, for being late. Uh, I had another meeting that ran over, uh, and so I wasn't able to get here on time. Usually I am on time, as many of you probably know, so I'm, I'm deeply embarrassed that uh, I have come so late. My, my, my apologies. Uh, but we have 30 or 35 minutes, and uh, what I thought might be of interest uh, is to perhaps speak to you all for about 10 or 15 minutes uh, about what's happening in the aviation sector, what are the big changes that are afoot, and then maybe leave 10 or 15 minutes to take any questions that you all might have. The aviation sector in India is going through profound transformational change. As Mr. Jalan correctly pointed out, if you look at the potential in India, we are deeply underpenetrated when it comes to air travel. Even then, in some ways, the numbers are astonishing. Today, we have about 9 crore passengers a year in the domestic sector, but that's 90 million people. We have about 5 crore, that's 50 million people, that are traveling internationally. In total, the total number of trips taken in India every year is 140 million, 14 crore. Now, that's well below what you would expect a country like India to be. But nonetheless, even 14 crore, and which is where the industry is right now, is also quite a large, large number. By way of comparison, and uh, once I came into the ministry, I sat down and I, I tried to calculate all of these numbers to get a feel for how big aviation already is. The total number of passengers on AC coaches on Indian railways, the total number of passengers on AC coaches in Indian railways is today 13 crore. So the aviation sector in that sense has already crossed the number of passengers traveling on AC coaches. In terms of revenue, international plus domestic for the aviation sector, we are at 1.4 lakh crores. We are at 1.4 lakh crores. By way of comparison, the entire telecom sector in India is at 1.8 lakh crores. And of course, this is an industry that's growing very fast. Uh, it's been growing at over 20% in passenger terms. In revenue terms, it's growing about 10% a year. Telecom has been growing at more like 5 or 6% a year as prices have come down and so on. So it's easy to see a situation where we could be the size of the telecom sector, which of course we think of as a very large industry. And aviation, therefore, is also one of the major and very large industries uh, in uh, this country. I don't know if you all know this, but the total passenger revenues, the total passenger revenues of Indian railways, does anyone know how much it is? If 1.4 lakh crores are the passenger revenue, passenger plus freight revenues, does anyone know what the passenger revenues of Indian Railways is? Uh, no, it's about, no, Indian Railways total revenues is about 1.5 lakh crores. 1.5 lakh crores. But of that 1.5 lakh crores, 1.1 lakh crores is actually freight. So the total passenger revenue, of course, there are many, many more people traveling on, on Indian Railways, but the total passenger revenue of Indian Railways is only about 40, 45,000 crores. And the passenger revenue of uh, aviation is now already at 1.3 lakh crores. So it is a very sizable sector. And at the same time, even as it's already a large sector, if you look at the potential that we have in terms of growth, it's actually quite astounding. Let me give you some comparisons. As I said, we have 14 crore passenger trips a year, 140 million. By way of comparison, China is at 450 million passenger trips. We have some 450 planes. China has some uh, 1,500 planes. So they are three times our size. The US, which is a much smaller country at 330 million people or so, in the US, the air travel market is 800 million passengers trips a year. So the US is at 800 million. China is at 450 million, and we are still only at 150 million. So if you look at the headroom in terms of growth, we've got very dramatic headroom for growth, and we are already a pretty large, sizable industry. So this is really a sunrise sector. The potential for growth, obviously, in airlines is enormous, but the potential for growth in airports, ground handling, uh, MRO, maintenance and repair, repair services, aerospace manufacturing, the entire aviation ecosystem, 
because of the kind of growth that we see is quite extraordinary. The employment multiplier, because actually aviation is a, a very high value uh, employer. People are generally paid very good salaries and so on. Uh, the direct, indirect and uh, induced uh, multiplier for employment in aviation is over six. So as we add aviation jobs, as this demand grows, it really is going to be a big uh, growth sector for the overall economy as well. So it's a very important sector for all of those reasons. It's already quite sizable, as I've described, but it also has tremendous room for future growth. People want to travel. People want to travel for many reasons. They travel to visit friends and relatives. They travel for business. They travel for tourism. Uh, they travel because of medical emergencies. So this inherent demand and the convenience of travel, of air travel, is such that we can see, even in the future, tremendous growth for this sector for the next 10, 15, 20 years. And we just have to look at China to see how their uh, aviation industry has grown. As I said, China has phoned 50 million passenger trips a year. We have 140 million. China also has over 200 airports, and we only have 75 airports right now that have scheduled service. So what are some of the things that we are doing to ensure that we realize this potential and that we continue to provide affordable air travel for all Indians so that it really becomes a big important driver for the economy. There are three very important priorities that we are focusing on. Obviously the first and most important priority for us, which I will not speak on, but that goes without saying, is safety and security. Safety and security. There's a lot of things we're doing there uh, as far as safety and security is concerned. One of the most important things we're doing there is actually trying to go to a unified command of CISF so that instead of security being looked at airport by airport, we look at the entire aviation system and we have the CISF really as a unified security organization looking at security across the aviation network. And if you remember uh, the IC814 hijacking, the IC814 hijacking that happened actually started in Kathmandu. And then, of course, they flew to airports in India and then out of India. So it really, these kinds of security situations are ones you have to look at across the network. You can't just look at it in isolation at one airport. So we have to think about it as an integrated system, and we are doing that uh, for, uh, for uh, security. But I'm not going to talk about security and safety. I'm going to talk about three other priorities. Uh, you expect very high levels of safety and security, and we are absolutely committed to that. Now, the three important priorities we are focusing on to achieve this potential. Number one is a better, a more delightful and digital passenger experience, which is the whole Air Seva initiative, which I'll talk about. Number two is the regional connectivity scheme, which is Uran. Mr. Jalan spoke about that. And then number three is airport capacity expansion. If we are going to double, triple, our air travel over the next 10, 15 years, we've got to double, triple airport capacity. All our airports are already uh, close to their uh, capacity limits. So those are the three major areas we're working on. First, let me talk about what we're trying to do with Air Seva. Air Seva is a major, major effort by the ministry to bring together all the players in the aviation ecosystem so that we can deliver a more delightful and digital travel experience. We've just started putting up these ads in all the airports. I don't know if as you've come for this uh, national meet, whether you, as you've gone through your airport, you've seen the Air Seva ads. But the idea is that we create one single integrated collaboration platform so that all the various players in the aviation ecosystems, the airport operators, the airlines, the restaurants, the transport companies, the parking operators, all of them together come together to provide a much better air travel experience to you. Security is also part of it and one of the big initiatives in Air Seva that we've just launched is getting rid of stamping for your baggage tags. You've experienced that? Do I get a round of applause for that? <laughs> We, we, we are actually trying to make the airport as digital as possible. You may have read in the paper that we are working on a way in which you can actually have e-boarding passes and biometric authentication and so on. The good news is all the building blocks are there. 
all the building blocks are there. But we have to now put the pieces together, make sure safety and security are not a compromise in any way. In fact, we can improve on safety and security and we can make the experience much more seamless. But Air Seva gives us a, a integrated collaboration platform. If we find that there are problems through consumer grievances and so on, in any one sector, we can spot them because we have dashboards by which we look at complaints coming in and we can keep evolving everything. So for instance, one of the major pain points right now, people are complaining about it relentlessly on Air Seva, is the immigration lines at some of our airports, particularly in Mumbai during peak times when lots of planes land, immigration takes a long time. And that's been a source of a lot of complaints, we're working on that. Then uh, we found that there were a lot of complaints about facilities at some of the airports, you know, the toilets were not clean and so on. So we've launched an effort to actually make sure that the facilities are cleaned up, the toilets are good and so on and so forth. So AirSeva enables all the players in the aviation ecosystem to work together to understand where the issues are and then on a very speedy, expedited basis to resolve that. And what I've explained during our meetings uh, for uh, Air Seva is that we really have to adopt across the aviation ecosystem the Kaizen continuous improvement mindset, which is these complaints are good because they tell us where to concentrate and how to improve how the whole system works. So that's Air Seva. If your baggage gets lost, or you don't get a refund, or the immigration line is too long, please download the Air Seva app or go to the web portal and please put in your complaint. If you put in your complaints, we will know where the pain points are and we'll be able to address them. And that's really what we're trying to do. Make it a delightful experience, make it a digital experience. That's the Air Seva initiative. That's the focus as far as the national aviation market is concerned these 75 airports that are operational right now. But even as we make these 75 airports much, much more convenient, much more delightful in terms of the air travel experience, we have to get a lot more airports attached to the aviation network. And that's what we're trying to do with the regional connectivity scheme. Ude desh ka aam nagrik, Udaan. Aur uspe mene ek naran, mene jo nikala hai, usme ye hai, कि हवाई चप्पल वाले को भी हवाई चप्पल वाले को भी हवाई जहाज पे बैठाना है and that's that's what we're trying to do that's what we're trying to do with उड़ान so with a price cap of uh, you know it's a graduated schedule but uh, 2500 rupees uh, for uh, one hour of flying as as an illustrative uh, price point we are trying to open up many many airports that currently don't have air service so you'd be shocked to know that Kanpur, a city of some 30 lakh people, didn't have any flight service. We just opened Kanpur a few days ago. Batinda, which was an airport that was fully functional in terms of the terminal and everything else, didn't have a flight service. We just started flight service to Batinda. So we are working for all these different airports and our goal through Udan, and this is a bidding scheme, it's a market-based scheme where people bid for the level of subsidy uh, that they want, our hope is going to be that we will add 10, 20, 30, 40 airports that currently have no flight service. We'll add them to the aviation network and we'll do it in an affordable way. I'll just give you one example and then I'll move on to the final point on this. Take Rajasthan. Beautiful, beautiful state, incredible tourism potential, many good airports. We've got Jaipur, but we've also got Jaisalmer, we've got Jodhpur, we've got uh, Udaipur, of course, uh, and we've got Bikaner, we've got even Kota. We've got a whole number of airports in Rajasthan, but there is simply not enough good air service between these airports. So what we're trying to do with Udan is to open up all of these airports for Rajasthan so that, for example, you can fly Bikaner to Jaipur as a commuter, you know, sort of a commuter flight, but also from Bikaner you can go to Jaisalmer. And as we open up these airports, we really believe that tourism and employment and a lot of other high value services will get a dramatic boost and will really enable both domestic and international tourists to get the best out of Rajasthan, to get the best out of Sikkim, to get the best out of the Northeast and the South and so many other beautiful areas that we have for tourism and for connectivity. That's how Udan is going to work for a place like Rajasthan, the Northeast, 
the hills where we are also trying to open up a number of airports. So that's a second major priority to expand the aviation map in India, go from 75 airports to 150 airports. That's Udan, second major initiative. Third major initiative, as I said, is airport capacity, airport capacity. Delhi airport is already at 58 million passenger trips a year. At the rate at which Delhi airport is growing, in the next five years, it's going to exceed 100 million passengers for the year. 100 million passengers. Do you know how many airports there are in this world that are at 100 million and above? It's a handful, maybe five or six. Beijing, Dubai, Atlanta, Chicago. There's just a few airports that are at 100 million passengers a year. But the rate at which we are growing, we will have major airports, global airports in India, just like we talk about Chicago, we talk about Tokyo, we talk about Heathrow, we will be talking about our Indian airports, whether it is Delhi, whether it's Mumbai, whether it's Bangalore, and so on. So we really have to massively expand our airport capacity so that a Delhi airport gets to be 100 million passengers. We build additional airports. So for example, in Mumbai, which is already at capacity, uh, we are building another airport in Navi Mumbai. So we have to do that. So as we go from 140 million passengers, which is what we have right now, to 300, 400 million passenger trips a year, we are going to have to massively expand airport capacity. And that requires us to work at three levels. One, look at our existing terminals, like Terminal 1D in Delhi, for instance. Make it a lot more efficient, a lot more uh, uh, convenient and easy to get through. So just take existing terminals and fix them. Secondly, which is what we're doing in many, many uh, cities now, is on that same land, that same uh, airport, existing airport, build a new terminal. So we are doing that now in many, many airports, building new terminals, Guwahati, uh, we're doing it in Agartala. These are places where new terminal buildings are coming up. We've just done one in Vadodara. And then building entirely new greenfield airports. So for example, in Goa, in Mopa, there's an entirely new airport coming up. Pune is going to see a new greenfield airport coming up and so on. So we have to work on all three of these dimensions at the same time. The existing terminals have to be made more efficient. We have to add new terminals on existing locations and we have to build greenfield airports. As we've sat down and estimated how much money this would require, uh, the sense is this is going to require somewhere between two and a half to three lakh crores. Two and a half to three lakh crores of investment is going to be required just in airports. And I'm not talking about the land acquisition that's required. Land acquisition, of course, is very expensive close to our cities. That will require, you know, billions and billions more, uh, maybe, uh, maybe uh, another 30, 40% more in terms of the investment necessary to build these airports. So this is a major, major expansion program. There's a tremendous amount of investment required. We have to think carefully about our regulatory framework and our policy regime to make sure that we have a full industry of airport operators and we have a number of investors, financiers that are interested in investing in our airports as an asset class. So for example, if you look at our toll highways, people are looking at that as an asset class and saying it's an attractive asset class. We have to take our airports and we have to make them similarly attractive as an asset class so that we have the sufficient uh, financing to build out uh, this massive uh, airport expansion that we require. Of course, the good news, as far as airports are concerned, is that they are self-funding. We have sufficient revenue sources for our airports to make these airports self-funding. So if we can get our regulations and our policies right, we will be in a situation where we can actually fund this airport expansion through private means with a little bit of government support, but we'll be able to build out all of these airports. So I'll conclude here by saying that all of these things that I'm talking about, safety, security, all these priorities are in a way driven by the landmark national civil aviation policy that we unveiled in June of 2016. This is the first time uh, in our uh, history since independence where we've had a national civil aviation policy. The national civil aviation policy uh, is, uh, is really, really uh, viewed around the world as being very, very liberal, very open uh, in terms of uh, 
uh, regulations in terms of investment opportunities. And that's what's really driving this tremendous growth uh, and is resulting in a great deal of interest in investing in India's aviation sector. Thank you very much. Happy to take questions.